Keijo's the latest sport rapidly gaining popularity in Japan. Here, a group of women balances themselves on a floating platform called land, at the center of a massive stadium. To eliminate their opponents, the players must send the others into the water, only by using either their twin peaks or their rump hills. The winner will be the last woman standing on the land. It's an intense game, with lots of spectators, heaps of prize money, and most importantly, clouds and light streaks by the dozen. Nozomi Kaminashi quickly falls in love with the sport, and she swears to become a Keijo player after graduating from high school. Fast forward a bit, she and her best friend, the former judo star athlete Sayaka Miyata, are finally admitted to the training school. Reporters gather by the institution to get an interview with these promising elite trainees. Nozomi enthusiastically approaches the media, but most of them have their eyes on the disinterested Sayaka. Although, one female press member named Shiyomi approaches Nozomi to ask her some questions. It doesn't take long before Shiyomi's associate demands her to interview more talented people, referring to the other candidates in the area. But hearing Shiyomi defend her name and talent prompts Nozomi to show off her gymnastic skills. With no shame whatsoever, she proudly declares that her ambition is to be the richest Keijo player in Japan. A noble ambition indeed. Give a round of applause, everyone. Now calling out to her is the test's third ranker, Kawaii Hanabi. It seems they're friends as they giddily talk about how elite class members get blue scarves compared to the regular class's red ones. The whispers get louder when a blondie approaches the two. It's the number one player, Kusakai Mio. She looks at Nozomi from head to toe, praises her figure, and even gets a bit touchy-feely. Oh my. Thankfully, they leave before Nozomi's brain can short-circuit. Miyata teases her for being so popular before they finally enter the stadium. Now inside, they reminisce about the Keijo athlete qualifier six months ago. 40 of them have passed. The final test will determine the top 10 who will comprise the elite class. These chosen individuals gain exclusive access to perks such as a 50% tuition fee discount. Hearing this greatly motivates Nozomi. The instructor then announces the test mechanics. They will have to play across lands connected by thin strips called roads. Rules are the same as a normal keijo. Hands and feet are forbidden, and touching the land with anything other than your feet is an auto-fail. Same goes for falling in the water. They'll be split into groups of 12 playing at a time. Before it starts, Nozomi clarifies if their ranks can still rise if they beat everyone else. Yes, it can. When the bell rings, all the players are stationary. Everyone's being careful. Well, almost everyone. Nozomi aggressively runs down the road, conjures a water curtain, and fires off a bum blaster. Despite the intelligent strategy, her foe hangs on to engage in a heated back and forth. This signals the others to get started as well. A group of bullies surrounds Miyata, eager to take down the judo prodigy. The same goes for Nozomi, who's trapped in between two opponents on the road. Using her flexibility, she somehow manages to leap over her opponent. And when the two go at it, she erupts her buns, successfully eliminating two people with one move. Just like Miyata, two down, two to go. Sensing her as a threat, three other girls join forces to hunt Nozomi. The situation's looking a bit grim until Hanabi flies into the scene. The would-be third ranker is too quick, pirouetting like a top. She sends each enemy into an unconscious state in an instant. Now it's just her and Nozomi, who absolutely refuses to lose. Even if Hanabi's much stronger and faster, the gutsy girl blocks the attack with her face. After this formidable exchange, she now acknowledges Nozomi's strength and heats up for the duel. On the other side, Mieta's in a fierce one-on-one -on -one with the last girl. At the very last second, she uses deceptive misdirection to knock her foe off the platform. Now it's clear that Nozomi's struggling against her superior opponent, but her resolve just won't let her lose as they battle Tata to Tata. This somehow corners Hanabi, but she just expands her balloons. Look at them go! To repel this, Nozomi groups her enemy's swimsuit with hers. It seems the two are equals as they fight tooth and nail in what can be considered as the greatest battle of the 21st century. Or should I say, chess story? <laughs> Just before time runs out, Nozomi gets hit in the jaw and falls into the water. Game over. Oh no! Is this it for her dreams already? 
Still, the prospect of being surrounded by so many strong people riles her up. But back to the present, Nozomi shares that it came as a big surprise when she received the acceptance letter to the training school. Her goal used to start and end with being a Keijo player, but now she's determined to win. Nida swears they'll get stronger together. After all, she wants to be popular enough to have her own swimsuit designer. Later that day, they proceed to the dorm. Oshima tells them they're assigned to room 309, also called the empty room since the people who are expected to get kicked out early gets put there. Upon entering the room, they meet two other girls who have very unique personalities. One is the friendly and clumsy Nan Toyoguchi, while the other is the introverted Kazane Aoba. Nan hands them over some local delicacies, then trips over her stuff. She claims it's part of her personality, but those tears aren't very convincing. Nonetheless, her goal is to become a famous Keijo player to bring fame to her quiet little village. Wanting to socialize with Kazane, Nozomi checks her magazine and accidentally rips it. As for Mieta, she can't believe she's roommates with such stressful people. At this school, class starts with a strict exercise regimen to strengthen the students' bums and chests. It's properly intense. Unfortunately, Nozomi's new roommates are falling behind. Their instructor goes on to explain that one in every five students drop out every year. Despite this, she reassures the students that they'll have the chance to make it to the elite class if their grades are good. Having physical strength is a given, but they'll also be evaluated according to their overall behavior and mindset. Although the training is grueling, Nozomi's overjoyed with a generous serving of delicious food. But when they see what the elite class gets to eat almost pretty much every day, they can't help but gasp in astonishment. Hanabi waves to them with a gelato in hand. Delish. Indeed, there is a huge disparity in treatment between the elite and the normal class. Now it's time for the regulars to go through hellish training again. Today's menu? 10 200-meter sprints while dragging a large tire, 20 pull-ups, 50 sit-ups, 100 squats, and other forms of muscle training. After that, they are lectured on the biological differences that lead to the formation of the bum. These lessons bore Donzomi, who finds the elite class already training on the land platform. When the instructor notices she isn't paying attention, she sends a piece of chalk flying in a unique way. Even more surprising is Mieta holding back her laughter. They end the day with a 15km run. It's going to be purgatory every day for the week. Well, no pay, no gain. And no gains, no fan service. Yeah. Finally back in their room, some of the girls recover while talking about going pro. Their idol? Shira Yuki Kyoko of Kyoto, an extremely talented Keijo athlete. Anyway, several days of doing core exercises leads to a visible improvement in all of our girls. Just look at their boing boings. Man, what an unusual way to roll a tire. Now it's time for some actual field training. The girls will be forming a circle with just their derriere, and they'll need to pass a beach ball around. It's game over if the ball falls to the floor, and the team with the least passes will be punished. This gets Nozomi fired up, while Kazane's visibly uneasy. The seemingly easy game starts to bear its fangs. They need to coordinate as not to collide with one another, and simultaneously calculate the ball's trajectory as the wind blows it away. Additionally, Kazane's inability to communicate leads to a lot of blunders. They always run into her since she can't voice out her current position. They eventually lose, so the girls ask her to speak a little louder. Now back in their room, Mieta explains that the exercise's focus was teamwork and coordination. Kazane distances herself but listens to the discussion. Being able to formulate and execute high-level tactics starts off with being in sync with your teammates first, which bothers Kazane, who needs to overcome her weakness pronto. The following day, it's part two of hip toss practice. The instructor informs them that today's top team will be rewarded with some icy gelatos. For Nozomi who doesn't know what gelato is, the fact that it's an elite class privilege motivates her enough. Mieta now suggests appointing a leader who will be giving accurate instructions on catching the ball. Unsurprisingly, everyone agrees to pick her. As they practice before the real game starts, the newly appointed leader does her best to give instructions, but she can't adjust her commands quickly enough for the wind. Therefore, the members miss the ball every time. Nozomi noticed one thing. Kazane's footprints are always moving towards the exact location of the ball's landing. She concludes that the quiet girl has a strong sense of prediction. This is finally proven when the ball lands right next to her. This realization causes Nozomi to pick Kazane as the leader. 
although the latter is terrified by the idea. The team also doesn't know how to deal with her communication problems. A genius workaround finally hits Nozomi. When the test starts, Kazane will use hand gestures to predict the ball's landing. Then Nozomi will interpret these and vocalize them into instructions for everyone to follow. It's a win-win situation. Kazane can communicate the direction of the ball while Nozomi does all the talking. The team works splendidly together and creeps towards the highest score. The instructor as well as the class are shocked by the rapid improvement. Still, Nozomi doesn't want to steal away Kazane's opportunity to learn. When they finally tie the top score, she deliberately announces a wrong instruction that sends the quiet girl into a panic. Left with no choice, Kazane screams out the instructions at the top of her lungs. Nozomi happily admits that she's been waiting for this and uses her gymnast reflexes to get to the ball. And they've won. That night, Kazane confesses that the primary reason she was silent was because, drum roll please, she was ashamed of her provincial accent. After all, Nozomi mentioned their dialects were funny on their first day of meeting. Nozomi apologizes, now realizing how insensitive that was. One thing's for sure, this test has brought the girls much closer. Finally, after two months, the regular class can now train on the land. Nozomi couldn't be more excited. While waiting for their instructors, Miata comments on Nozomi's well-trained bum and the noticeable improvement of her overall figure. These swimsuits really do well in highlighting their curves. Now for their first day of class on land, the instructors decide to hold a mock race with the teachers. It will be four students versus one teacher on basic land. The students will be evaluated by how well they do in bum strikes against their teachers. One of the teacher easily sends four students underwater with one strike, much to Nozomi and her friend's astonishment. After a bit of time, it's finally their turn. They're matched up against Ujibe, instructor that can only be described as thick with a double C. Hello, mama. Nozomi doubts Ujibe, but Miata lectures that she was once the most famous and beautiful player in Keijo's early days. While their befuddled fathom the stark differences between then and now, it doesn't matter. Nozomi simply states that they have to show off their team's strength. She lunges in first with a powerful smack, but it's not enough to shift the immovable object. The girls exhibit praiseworthy teamwork. Sadly, their attacks are all easily repelled. Meanwhile, Kawaii Hanabi is in the middle of their lesson when she looks out the window to watch Nozomi and her friend's performance. Her seatmate Mio also spectates these events. They're just in luck as Nozomi performs repeated flips to gain some momentum. The instructor is ready to take her strongest blow, but seeing that glowing bum intimidates even her, she's forced to dodge. The impact of Nozomi's strike is enough to send shockwaves to the arena and rips her teammates' swimsuits to shreds. Battle over. The other team may have lost the battle, but we have won the war! <laughs> The special move puts Nozomi through a bout of back-breaking pain. She's immediately escorted to the infirmary. As this happens, the instructors can't believe their eyes. That move should be impossible for a new trainee to learn. But hey, miracles can happen. Nozomi ends up skipping class that day. Later on, Kazane massages her back to ease the pain, while the others help her catch up with lessons. They explain the classification of Keijo athletes. They're divided into three types based on fighting style. First, the in-fighter type that excels at close range and relies on pure strength. Second, the out-fighter type that stays away and uses her speed. And finally, the counter type who uses the opponent's attacks and strength against them to win. They begin to praise Miata, who's proud of the speed she's accumulated since her judo days. Perhaps she's a competent outfighter in the Keijo scene. The next agenda is buying new swimsuits. After all, Nozomi ruined their previous ones. But they're interrupted when Hanabi and Mio from the elite class shows up. The two begin discussing Nozomi's move earlier. Apparently, it's called a vacuum bum cannon, much to even Nozomi's surprise. What is that? According to Hanabi, it pairs powerful rotational energy with a strong twist of the hips to rip through the air. Even pro players have difficulty using it properly. Whoever can use the move has the potential to become a prize queen. This undoubtedly excites Nozomi, who begins to imagine a luxurious life. This motivates her to make the vacuum bum cannon truly hers. That's when another elite student butts in, saying Nozomi's too good for the pleb class. She introduces herself as the fastest outfighter in Western Japan, Rokudo Rin. 
although Mia explains that underneath the confident expression is a cute kitten. Not wasting any time, Rin demonstrates her agility by speedily launching attacks and running behind none. It's a brutal eye-opener for Room 309's occupants. Anyway, Rin tells Nozomi to train with her instead. She'll gain nothing from practicing with her underperforming roommates. When the latter defends her friends, Rin claims none of the outfighters are even remotely near her level. That comes off as a veiled insult to the zippy Miata. The elite girls bring up a fun class promotion race coming up soon, but before she can explain any further, Hanabi pulls her friends away. Now that it's just the roommates left alone, Miata's clearly a little bothered by the recent events. She's visibly cold to Nozomi for the praise she's received from the elites. Later on, the instructors gather them to categorize their types. As expected, Mieta's chosen as an outfighter, along with Kazane. None is placed in the counter class. Meanwhile, Nozomi is summoned for a private one-on-one -on -one with the instructor regarding her classification. Ujibe mentions everything that was said earlier. The vacuum bomb cannon is a valuable asset that can turn her into a prize queen. Hearing this lifts Nozomi's spirits, but it appears that it was premature. She's forbidden from using the technique ever again. And if she does, she'll be expelled. The explanation follows. Although the technique is outstanding, it places too much stress on the hip bones. Most, if not all, the prize queens that have used it have received permanent injuries and were forced into early retirement. Images of the instructor's glory days flash, and boy are they glorious. Despite the risk, Nozomi refuses to hold back such a powerful skill. She gets on her knees and begs the instructor to guide her in mastering the technique, with the goal of becoming the best cage athlete she can possibly become, and a prize queen. At first, the instructor is reluctant since there are other techniques that can achieve the same result anyways, but she finally gives her a chance. Nozomi's test exhibit her willpower by wearing this special swimsuit called the UTM, Ujibe Training Module, for a month. The swimsuit in question constricts its user's movement, requiring the application of strength 24-7 just to perform everyday tasks. Wearing it around earns some laughs from onlookers, especially because it leads to some awkward motions. The swimsuit keeps twisting and bending her body in the process, making it extremely difficult to participate in regular classes activities. Poor girl can't even eat or sleep in peace. All the room's occupants are experiencing growth at this stage. Mieta's desperately finding ways to exponentially increase her bum attack speed, while Nan and Kazane help rehabilitate their classmates' aching muscles. While Nozomi and Miyaka talk about the suit, the former explains that it's taught her to focus her muscles on a smaller surface area to move more efficiently. It's a light bulb moment for Miyata, who can try to incorporate it into her own moves. A few days pass by in a flash. Under the starry skies, Nozomi adjusts her breathing and muscles to move more effectively in the suit. She can now go for a decent run despite the suit's limitations. Her latest achievement places a radiant smile on her face. As this happens, Mieta's also discovered the secret to maximizing her speed. Her lightning-fast bump smacking has finally entered Rin's realm of agility. It's going to be a match for the ages. The competition can't come any sooner, and these girls are out to prove that they shouldn't be underestimated. They'll surely go far with each other's support and that unyielding drive for victory. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.